Welcome to New Normal 101, kung saan sa tulong ng siyensya at teknolohiya, lalabanan natin ang pandemya. Biyernes na muli at isa na namang oras na kwentuhan ng may kabuluhan ang magaganap dito sa New Normal 101. At dahil absent ako last time, last episode was hosted by our newfound friends, Sir Zian Guevara and Miss Gil Alonso. If you missed out on our last episode on animal welfare, make sure you click here. Like, follow, and subscribe on PUP Cray TV's Facebook page and YouTube channel. Now, New Normal 101 is just one click away, kaya huwag kayong papahuli. For this episode, meron na naman tayong bagong mga kasama. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a student from BA Broadcasting 2-2N from the College of Communication of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, my alma mater. So just like me, he also loves hosting events. So without further ado, let us all welcome Mr. James Denoyo. Welcome to New Normal 101, James. Hello, name? hello. Hello sa inyong lahat na nanonood dito sa New Normal 101. Good morning sa iyo. Good day sa iyo, um, Jeremy. And thank you then for having me dito sa New Normal 101. Excited ako to be part of New Normal 101. Napapanood ko yung mga previous episode and truly educational ang ating show. So I am so much privileged para mapabilang and to be one of the hosts ng New Normal 101. And I'm sure ready na rin, much like me, ang ating mga kaisko at mga kaiska. Because as always, New Normal 101 never breaks its promise. Hindi lang tayo busog sa kaalaman, present pa every Friday para mag-iwan ng mga aral na sure na sure kaming tatatak sa inyo, ganun din sa amin. Yeah, I mean, please James, the pleasure is all ours. And tamang-tama ka dyan, hinding-hindi tayo magpapahuli. Lalo na at nag-start na ang tag-ulan season, as you may all know. Um, dahil dito, may mga lugar na prone sa baha. If you remember the last episode I was in, we discussed about Marikina and you know how it's geologically talaga possible for it to um, have constant flooding talaga. Not only that, not only pagbabaha when it talks about natural disaster, but also landslides at iba pang mga kalamidad. Kaya naman swak na swak ang main focus natin today, which is all about disaster risk reduction. So ano nga ba ang DRR or ang disaster, disaster risk reduction? Basically, DRR is the concept and practice of reducing, okay? Okay, reducing disaster risks through a systematic effort in analyzing and reducing the causal factors of disasters. It aims to reduce the damage caused by natural hazards like yun nga, pagbaha, minsan paglindol, pagpotok ng vulkan, very, very recent, very timely, droughts, mga tagtuyot, cyclones, through an ethic of prevention. Yes, yes. Tama ka dyan, no? Tama ka dyan, Jeremiah. And also to add lang na itong mga hazards na ito, highly influence sila ng different factors. Kasama dyan, syempre, yung mga umiiral nating mga policies, yung population demographics, and of course, the heavily existing yung climate change that we are now experiencing. And this risk can change over time. No? Yung disaster risk reduction, kasama dyan yung disiplina natin in disaster management, disaster mitigation, and also yung ating preparedness when at times na nag na nag occur itong mga ito but DRR is also part of sustainable development no yung um, para ma para magkaroon tayo ng development activities to be sustainable kailangan meron tayong way ng management ng disaster risk um ng disaster risk right it is a process also for us of protecting the livelihoods and the assets of the communities and individuals from the impacts of this hazard syempre meron tayong mga uh, mga kababayan that are prone, yung mga magsasaka natin, 
uh, yung mga kabilang sa ganitong mga industriya sa yeah. Pilipinas. No? Yeah. And also, yung disaster risk reduction management, it limits yung negative impacts ng mga events like this. Siyempre, by working to reduce their size, their strength, mm-hmm. and how often they occur by building um uh, by building the capacity of the people to be exposed dito sa mga hazards na ito to help them anticipate, survive, and eventually recover from all these hazards. Very true, very true. I cannot agree more. Um, safety is very important. It's, it's, it is imperative. And disaster risk reduction reduces the vulnerability and impact of the disasters that we're currently facing or will be facing. Lalo sa ating bansa, in the Philippines, that as we may all know, we are very prone and vulnerable sa natural hazards or disasters. For example, pagbaha. Well, pagbaha, napakalman sa Pilipinas. Did you know na sa isang taon, we have an average of 20 typhoons. 20 na bagyo that are coming in every year. At lima sa 20 bagyo na yun ay napaka-destructive. Taking a toll on not only infrastructure, but also human and animal life. Now, we, we, as we may all know din naman, you know, floods uh, take hours or even days to, to develop. Giving residents time to prepare or evacuate. But, but, and here's a huge but, is hindi ito excuse. This is not an excuse for us to be complacent on this natural disaster alone. Because others, other floods, generate quickly and with little to no warning at all. These are called flash floods and they can be extremely dangerous, instantly turning a babbling brook or even a dry wash into, ru- into a rushing rapids that sweep everything in their path downstream. Diba, James? That is right, no, Jeremiah. Important then, Um, that we are safe and our and at ourselves during and after the disasters. Um, um, gaya nito, no? yung mga kaiskot guys ka natin. I know na some of you would um, already know that we are situated geographically mm-hmm. in the Pacific Ring of Fire, and it has and it plays major role kung bakit natin nararanasan yung average of 20 typhoons, kung bakit nakakaranas tayo ng mga um, recurring earthquake events, ganyan, because we are situated at Pacific Ring on Fire. Just for your information, on average, nakakaranas tayo ng magnitude 8 na lindol. No, somewhere, some somewhere in the Philippines every year, and merong uh, merong about merong about 10,000 people individual who lost their lives because of this um, of this hazards. No, kabilang na jans tempo yung pagkolap sa mga building due to earthquake. Ito yung um, major reason kung bakit nagkaroon tayo ng casualties during this time. And also, these kinds of these kinds of event ay nagpapahira for our rescue efforts para mas mapadali, mas mapa swift yung um, yung rescue efforts natin during this time of Um, calamities or hazards um, as as I was saying no so um, important that we know that um, that the Philippines or for one I prone to this activity so that we will have um, to do intervention kung paano natin ito uh, masusolusyonan or mapiprevent yeah I could, have, I could not have said it any better James no? um, you know even with all these disasters and calamities that we're facing we really cannot tell when the next earthquake will happen We really cannot tell when the next volcanic eruption will happen. What we, what we, get, we can only tell ay yung, ay yung, uh, yung sa pag-ulan, o kailan ang ulan, kailan natatama ang bagyo, so on and so forth. But uh, other than that, earthquakes um, and volcanic eruptions are really, siguro, still, still a mystery for us kung kailan sila mag-o-occur. We don't have the capacity yet to, to determine when and, uh, yeah, when and where it will happen sa volcano and uh, and mga ito. Now, even with, with all these disasters, we cannot prevent an earthquake from happening or occurring or from, uh, like I said, a volcano from erupting. This, mga kaisko, mga, mga, mga kaiska, this is where science and technology comes into play. SNT, or science and technology, helps us to understand the mechanism of natural hazards of atmospherical, geophysical, hydrological, and even biological origins, which are made up of an orderly system of facts that have been proven and tested from study, experiment, and observations of natural disasters and or and or hazards as well as of course not only pag observe sa mga um, phenomenon or phenomena na ito but also observing and studying their impacts on humankind and of course yung mga ginagawa natin in our everyday lives the sufferings now the sufferings can be reduced can be mitigated by creating proper awareness of the likely disasters and its impact by developing a suitable warning system which as we may all be, be aware is kind of lacking here in the Philippines 
Now, this extra preparedness um, comes into play as well. But not only that, because it cannot stand alone, being prepared is not enough for us to prevent casualties, but also proper disaster management. Prepared ka nga, pero hindi, hindi naman na mamanage ng maayos ang pag-evacuate, ang pag-deliver ng relief goods. So wala rin. Mabamatay din tayo kung hindi naman tayo nabibigyan ng proper instructions by our local government or our national government if the case is very severe. Diba? So... Aside from that, we are living in a digital age. Why not use the advances of technology for us to, you know, to survive another day when, it, when we're facing a heavy, heavy um, uh, calamity um, in front of our face? Now, we also need to promote disaster risk resilience not only here in the university, not only in schools, not only in high school or elementary. You know, mga earthquake withdrills that we're doing, not only there in the educational institutions, but also in our workplace environment. How? We can do that through structural and non-structural measures and encourage the revision of existing or new standards, codes, rehabilitation, or reconstruction practice. Of course, not only local, but kung kakailanganin, national levels. What do you think, James? Yes, tama ka dyan, tama ka dyan Jeremiah. No? It's important that we are mindful um, during these times no? with the help of science and technologies as you were Um, saying kanina pa, no? Yung science and technology, um, it helps us to know already how much the natural hazards and about the ways and means to avoid, to reduce many of their effects. No? Success and significantly reducing disaster is within our reach through this advancement na available now um, um, with the science and technology. Yung advanced system natin when it comes to forecasting sa mga bagyo, yung monitoring and yung issuance ng early warning um, early warnings, mahalaga yung papel na ginagampanan niya para din ma-determine ng ating mga kababayan, also us, yung mga natural hazard na ina-assume natin that would be disastrous. That could be disastrous or not. no Yung mga um, yung mga bagyo, gano sila kalakas with the signal warning 1, 2, 3, and 4, and things like that. Nagkakaroon ng idea and preparation yung ating mga kababayan. Also, Um, we can develop um, a guidance no, for preparedness and also help them reconstruct um, the, 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 the things that they have now. So kung meron tayong mga bagyo na paparating, we can um, inform them ahead of time kung paano nila ito may iwasan or may reduce yung impact um, ng, ng disaster na ito sa kanila. Yeah, good points. Uh, very good points, James. You know, disasters come in all shapes and sizes. And the tools that we use to reduce the risk varies as well. Meron tayo ibang mga ginagamit na kasangkapan in terms of, you know, involving volcanic eruption or any volcanic activity. And this is the same time, there are also different ways of managing and being prepared in times of mga bagyo, the most common calamity here in the Philippines. Kaya mga kaisko, mga kaiska, dapat lagi tayong handa kapag at kung may sakuna. So there you have it. Now we're just getting warmed up pero naibahagi na namin sa inyo ang a little sneak peek lang siguro, a little sneak peek of what the DRR or Disaster Risk Reduction and Management is. Again, we're just getting started. So ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned dahil sa next segment ay mayroon na naman tayong very, very special guest. Abangan kung sino siya at patuloy na tumutok dito sa New Normal 101. Dahil dito, modern tayo. Accrediting Agency for Chartered Colleges and Universities in the Philippines o AHOC sinuri ang mga programa ng College of Education at Graduate School. Tumakbo ng limang araw ang nasabing college evaluation sa apat na mga programa sa ilalim ng College of Education. Kabilang rito ang Bachelor of Secondary Education, Bachelor of Elementary Education, Master of Science in Mathematics Education, at Master in Library and Information Science. at programang Master of Science in Information Technology at Master of Arts in Filipino ng PUP Graduate School. Layunin ng ACOP na siguraduhin ang kalidad sa edukasyon ng unibersidad na isang mahalagang bahagi ng sistema ng higher education, lalo na sa mga chartered state colleges at universidad sa Pilipinas. Kasabay ng coaching, mentoring at pagbibigay ng rekomendasyon ng mga accreditors, sa exit conference ipinahayag ni Dr. Marie Oria Sandoval ang overall team leader ng ACUP na ang limang araw na pagsusuri sa kolehiyo ng edukasyon ay isang oportunidad kung saan nasaksihan nito ang paglago ng universidad. 
ilalabas ang resulta ng isinagawang college accreditation sa Agosto. Inaasahan namang Nobyembre ngayong taon, siyam na graduate at undergraduate programs ng kolehiyo ng edukasyon ang may evaluate for Level 4 visit ng AKU. Ang mga co-ed programs na ito ay ang Doctor of Educational Management, Master of Educational Management, Master of Arts in English Language Teaching, at Bachelor of Business Teacher Education. At yan ang balita sa mga oras na ito. Ako si Joanna Luna para sa The Observer Flash Online. At nagbabalik ang New Normal 101. I'm still here with James at kanina napasadahan natin ng bahagya, bahagya lang naman, ang Disaster Risk Reduction and Management. So let's proceed with our next topic which is all about the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. You've heard of them before as the NDRRMC, formerly known as the National Disaster Coordinating Council or the NDCC. Ngayon, sa tulong ng ating napaka-espesyal na bisita ngayon, bibigyan natin ng kulay or ng buhay din para sa atin mga kaisko at mga kaiska ang NDRRMC. So without further ado, let me introduce to you our guest for today's show. He is the NDRRMC spokesperson and one, we are very privileged to have him as one of our professors here at the College of Communication in PUP. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Mark Timbal. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, my uh, James. Thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction and uh, isang magandang araw sa lahat ng mga uh, isko at iska natin dyan sa PUP. Good morning sa lahat. We are very, very uh, privileged to have you on board, sir. So welcome po sa aming butihing program now, New Normal 101. So sir, let's let's dive into it already for our number one question. Hindi hindi ito mawala at hindi pwedeng makalimutan. Sir Mark, ano po ang New Normal ninyo ngayong pandemic? Mas busy. <laughs> um, because al- alam nyo naman, hindi tumigil ang ating pagtatrabaho for disaster uh-huh. risk reduction and management at dumagdag pa itong pandemic management natin. At uh, sa kasalukuyan, we, we also have the Taal Volcano Operation. So yes. kumbaga sa overtime, 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 three times na itong nangyayari. But we're still happy, work happily working para sa ating mga kababayan. Yan ang ating new normal <laughs> for this time. Okay. Pero sir, uh, sorry, if I may just ask lang, very quickly lang, naging mas mahirap ba siguro ngayon yung coordination sa National, Dis- sa, sa National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council? Ngayong, of course, very distant na tayo ngayon, no more face-to-face meetings, only, ano lang talaga, only online meetings lang. To be honest, mas, mas matindi nga coordination ngayon dahil kahit Ooh. asan ka. Maabot okay. ka ng so, okay. video teleconferencing sa ayaw mo sa, sa gusto na umatend. <laughs> Wala excuse Talagang na kailangan. Na Kasi mm. no excuse ka na just as long yeah. as there is internet in the area and we have been provided all the connection support. Kaya coordination wise, um, it's more what uh, it's become a normal thing for us for mm-hmm. video teleconferencing at uh, ah. palagi ng may BTC <laughs> ngayon. Mm, I see. That, that's, that's very exciting to hear, no, sir, Mark. Okay, James? Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, sir, for your service. No? Talagang um, double, triple the effort now that we are still <laughs> um, in the pandemic. Pero ayan, sir, now we are going to our next topic for today. Mm-hmm. So, sir, Mark, um, can you discuss to us and also to our viewers, mga fellow ISCA, and isko what NDRRMC is and its mission for the context lamang ng ating viewers. Siyempre, we can wait din na pag-usapan dahil malaking part yung NDRRMC for ensuring the protection and welfare of the people during the disasters or emergency. Yeah. Uh, to be frank about it, hindi lang talaga during emergencies ang trabaho namin. Kasi uh, we handle disaster risk reduction and management in the entire thematic uh, components of it. Um, from disaster uh, mitigation and prevention, we also handle disaster preparedness, we also handle response and then rehab and recovery. So it's not just a responding to the disaster. Um, the NDRMC is the lead uh, agency of the Philippines when it comes to um, the lead instrument, allow me to use the term instrument, kasi hindi lang kami nag-iisang agency. The NDRMC is composed of 45. It's a council of 45 government, non-government, uh, quasi-government agencies. 
na ang lion ay masiguro na lahat ng kababayan natin ay uh, ligtas, uh, panatag, uh, climate change adaptive at uh, matatag when it comes to disaster resilience. Kasi the, the end point here is to promote um, resilience para ma-enjoy natin yung continuing progress. Uh, economic development uh, is not simply what the building of businesses etc yeah. it's a holistic approach and disaster risk reduction and management has an integral role uh, in national development in nation building and, and that's uh, that's the primary mission uh, of uh, of the NDRMC uh, to protect the people and to facilitate uh, Na, the the progress of the country protection of all the assets that we've had the gains that we have had uh, para masigurado ang isang komportable at maunlad na buhay para sa ating mga kababayan okay okay thank you for that sir no so if, if i may just ask sir no um uh, uh, the ndrmc being a council do, do you also by any chance siguro if i may just ask do you also um help in making policies or let's say for example law minimum laws pero siguro somewhere along those lines in terms of keeping our people safe and secure during times of you know calamities and before uh, and of course being prepared in mm-hmm. case there's a, there's a calamity Well, policy-wise, NDRMC is the highest policy-making when it uh, oh. policy-making body when it comes to disaster yeah. reduction. Pero yung legislative functions wala kami niyan. Yeah. Talagang nasa Kongreso yan. Correct. Ang ginagawa namin yung pagpapatupad talaga yung batas na nag-create ng NDRMC, hmm. which is the Philippine Disaster Management Law. At uh, mas pinalawak natin yung interpretasyon talaga nitong batas na to through its uh, implementation. Uh, okay. Meron tayong mga disaster management plans. We have the disaster management programs. Uh, napakarami niyan uh, na tinatarget yung iba't ibang mga aspeto hmm. ng ating uh, Um, disaster landscape dito sa Pilipinas. Um, ito ay isang uh, uh, functionality ng NDRRMC na hindi kayang gawin ng isang departamento lamang. This is a, a component share, uh, a function shared by all uh, government agencies. Pero be mindful, hindi lang gobyerno ang may responsibilidad sa disaster management, kundi ang pangkalahatan ng lipunan ng Pilipinas. Right. Ang filosofiya kasi natin dito is a whole of nation approach. Uh, kasama ang gobyerno, kasama ang private sector, academia, religious sector, business sector. Wala dapat may iwan sa pag-advance natin. Thank you so much, Sir Mark. No, very enlightening yung mga inputs niyo, and actually dun sa yung being the enforcers of the ano of, of the let's say, siguro let, let me use that term as well. For enforcers of of uh, you know yun, yung yung pagpapatupad ng policy ng ating gobyerno when it comes to being prepared and of course reducing yung risks ng mm-hmm. mga disasters and calamities. So moving on. Now safety, I think uh, we, we can all agree that safety is the number one priority, most especially po to wing may sakuna. We must Be, we must go beyond emergency relief and life-saving actions. And I can't help but feel curious kung paano ba nagpa-plano ang NDRMC for emergencies. So, Sir Mark, uh, siguro very quickly lang, can you uh, explain to us how the disaster preparedness plan of NDRMC fans out? Very quickly lang naman, sir. Siguro overview para ang gano'n. Oo. Ang, itong ating plans for uh, response, hindi natin uh, ginagawa yan at the onset na may yeah. problema na. Advance nating ginagawa yan, meron tayong National Disaster Management Framework and Program uh, Plan. This, uh, han, uh, this encompasses all our uh, strategic thrusts, yung ating mga, mga layo na ito nga naising gawin. Pero when it comes to the actual safety of the people, meron tayong mga advocacy elements, separate separate pa yan. May mga education, information education plans pa tayo. At sa pag-response, may ginawa pa tayong mga national disaster response plans sa iba't ibang klaseng emergency sa, sa tropical cyclone, sa earthquake, uh, sa terrorist attack, uh, nuclear Ooh. biological uh, emergencies, pati pa sa gera. Meron tayong mga Ooh. ginawa uh, uh, response plans and emergency plans. etong sa Metro Manila, uh, yung threat sa Metro Manila ng ating uh, West Valley Fault yung uh, the big one the meron big din ta- one. meron din tayong national harmonized contingency plan for that na kung saan uh, magiging action ng buong bansa para tulungan ang uh, national capital region ay nakakasana din 
at siyempre hindi lang plano yan. <laughs> Kasi yes, of kung plano um, lang yan, di mga ngamote tayo pag nagkaroon ng response. Kung hanggang sa plano lang tayo, drawing right. lang yan. So what we're doing is we're implementing all the components of these plans. We're educating all the stakeholders para kapag wag naman sanang loobin ng Diyos na mangyari itong mga kinakatakutan nating mga bagay na pinagkakandaan natin, eh, we'll be caught with our pants down. So, right. ang gusto natin, handa tayo sa lahat ng pagkakataon at meron tayong magagawa para mailigtas at mapanatili, mapanatili yung uh, kaligtasan kamanatagan ng mga kababayan natin. I really appreciate, Sir Mark, yung ano, no, yung, yung what you just said uh, before na, oh, oh, just now is that not only are are, are the NDR or, or sorry not only is the NDRMC preparing for national for natural disasters but also yung mga man-made disasters as well like nuclear warfare in case na mangyari yun as well as mga mga gera something na i think hindi din na lingit siguro sa kaalaman ng ating mga viewers kasi as we may all know we, we usually hear in the RMC kapag uh, may mga balita tungkol sa natural disaster mga pagtutok ng bulkan pero never well as as you said naman sana nga wag naman sana uh, magkatotoo pero in case na magkaroon ng gera at wag naman sana mangyari is uh, the NDRM still uh, sorry the NDRM still plays a major role in you know in preventing further casualties or damage sa Pilipinas mm-hmm. actually it's clear for the it's clear for the Germany and James now when it comes to uh, armed conflict ha uh-huh. hindi hindi trabaho ni NDRMC na i-prevent na <laughs> magkaroon yeah, ng yeah. Armed conflict. <laughs> what what, what uh-huh. we're doing pag sa ganun is consequence management na why because yung type ng emergency may mga compli- complexities yan uh-huh. na for example pag terrorist activity yan uh-huh. uh, this is more of a law enforcement uh, situation yes. and security situation. So, as an example, itong Marawi siege, uh-huh. di ba? Uh, this involved uh, military action in defense of, of the state. So, ang ginawa ni NDRMC is to protect and uh, make sure that all those who are affected by the armed conflict, the siege itself, will be provided their uh, necessities, shelter, etc. And will be protected then from uh, the other adverse impacts, uh, psychologically, uh, chaka economically, uh, nitong armed conflict. Uh, but yung batbaka na yan, yung banatan, di kami susugod. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, although I was there in Marawi during during that time, during the time uh, of the siege, part of the deployment. Yes. Yeah, so, pero ang trabaho ko lang during that time is to coordinate uh, the humanitarian effort. Yeah, uh-huh. yun yung inaasikaso natin to. Um, takot tayo dyan sa mga bakbaka ni mahirap mahirap na maipit sa gitna ng mag, mga nagliliparang bala ground zero yes totoo naman totoo <laughs> yeah, that's part of the excitement of the job really <laughs> that's part of the thrill ika nga yes. okay, thank you sir Mark okay James nice yes, sir yes um, gusto ko lang dun i-highlight yung sinabi ni sir that it is not a one man effort no collaborative siya so dapat din malaman ng mga ating kaisko at kaisda who are actually watching um today na Lahat yung mga communities natin mahalaga yung role niya then in fulfilling or preparing for disasters and reduce their impact no. Um disaster often follow natural hazards kung saan magreresulta ito ng consequences ng marami pang mga casualty. So um so Mark my question to you is um or can you help me ex- explain it sa ating mga kaisko at kaiska? Why is it important to have a disaster risk reduction dito po sa Pilipinas? Yeah. Uh, tama yung sinabi mo. It's not a lonely effort on the part of government. The responsibility is a shared responsibility uh, between citizens at saka yung authorities and all sectors of society. Ngayon, yung yung sinabi mo tungkol sa... What, what, what's that again, uh, James? Yung, yung sa uh, disaster risk reduction po here mm-hmm. in the it's important na ang ang disaster talaga mape-prevent natin ang disaster yung natural hazard impossible magawa yan dahil para uh, suntok sa buwan talaga yung pigilan mo yung bagyo di ba may joke nga na sinasabi yung mga tao akala namin binabantayan ng pag-asa yung bagyo paano nakapasok yan <laughs> and, and and that's that's an insider joke that we are laughing at but um, the fact is a storm is just a storm an earthquake is just an earthquake it becomes a disaster if the effects um, 
go beyond the capability of, of the community to cope. Kumbaga, sa pinatumba, wala nang bangon-bangon. Yun ang disaster. Diba? Hirap bumangon. Um, one of the nicest uh, things that I can showcase is that the Philippines is learning, always learning the lessons of, of disaster reduction. Mahalaga na may DRRM tayo. Bakit? Imagine mo yung location ng Pilipinas, napaka-special. Sa lahat ng kung binibiro tayo sa Southeast Asia, napagawaan daw tayo ng bagyo. <laughs> Kasi bago tumama sa mainland Asia yung bagyo, nanggagaling muna sa Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. Diba? And kapag pinanganak ang bagyo sa, South, uh, sa Pacific, syempre, um, magpapatatak muna yan sa passport niya dito sa Pilipinas. Taan muna siya dito sa atin. Um, we, we are in the Pacific Typhoon Belt. Meron, andito rin tayo sa Pacific uh, Ring of uh, sa Ring of Fire, mm-hmm. 'di ba? So, kumbaga, ang wala lang lahat ata ng natural hazards nandito sa atin liban sa avalanche kasi wala namang snow dito, 'di ba? Right. And and disaster reduction is important because that allows us that the the activity itself of disaster reduction uh, help us to survive <laughs> uh, to survive these natural items and effective disaster risk, uh, risk reduction and management prevents uh, the occurrence of a disaster diba? ang pansin ninyo, one of the indicators of our continuing development sa so disaster risk reduction is if you use the super typhoon Yolanda as, as a benchmark diba? imagine yung during that time, naghanda nga tayo pero sa isang magdamag, tagpas 6,000 mga tao ang nawala, ang nasawi. Di ba? Okay. Here comes 2020, dumating si Super Typhoon Rolly. Super Typhoon din yun. Pero how many people did we lost? Who did we lose? Di ba? It did not come to the level of Yolanda. Di ba? Correct, correct. Na hindi mo nang lumagpas ng 100 yan. And yung level of desperation ng mga kababayan natin, experience at the Yolanda incident was not repeated in the rolling yeah. incident why because all our preparations were 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 at par sabi natin we are at par with the emergency kumbaga na there was there was the 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 hardship yeah the difficulty uh-huh. the suffering what have you pero hindi ganon katindi unlike Yolanda it's because everyone was working hard all the citizens were cooperating uh handa tayo policy wise equipment wise uh, preparation wise um, we were ready for a super typhoon may pandemya pa tayo no na correct pa, correct oh, diba? may, 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 may sabi, mm-hmm. sorry, it's it's yes. very uh, it's it's very relieving no, to, to hear na as, as you shared the disparity between the numbers of, of the lives lost back in Yolanda and the lives lost back here uh, last year lang sa, sa typhoon Rolly. so it's just um, it's just very relieving for us kami, kami mga mamamayan na as time goes by we are reducing the the number of uh, of damage uh, to property and to human lives um oh. ng mga mga bagyo ng mga kalamidad so we definitely cannot wait for the time na again in case na mangyari naman ho ito ulit and we're pretty sure naman siguro it's gonna happen again be us being situ- situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire and the Typhoon Belt as you said Uh, we, we can't wait for, for the time na you know na talagang zero talagang wala no casualties talaga and uh, we're we're really uh, all set talaga for any types of uh, of problems but I, but uh, as you said nga sir so I'll just repeat what what sir James and what you said sir na it's not just the, the job of the NERMC but it's a collective effort as a correct it's kasi very, walang say say lahat ng gagawin correct. namin kung wala namang mm-hmm. public buy in mukha lang kami mga timang dito na correct. nagsasalita correct. kung diba? wala rin namang cooperation you know, to evacuate mga ganun hindi rin naman mm-hmm. nangyayari yung uh, yung no casualty goal talaga natin so thank although, you although so Jeremiah and James I'm not saying that the, our disaster management system is perfect na yes <laughs> there, there would still be pitfalls there would still be some difficulties encountered yes. pero So, focus on the target kami which is Correct. to save people to protect people kagaya ngayon sa Taal operations natin oh, yeah. sumabog si Taal apat na beses siya nag-erupt diba na uh, as of this time na nag-uusap tayo pero did we lose anyone 
wala pa naman. Uh, we have con- we have conducted uh, pre- uh, preemptive evacuation of communities in the high risk areas. And the reason for that is we want to make sure nobody nobody gets killed in the process yes. in case an emergency happens. This I is the sir, focus. Yeah, I think sir that is rin what, what one of the reasons that speaks a lot about why we need to institutionalize then yung NDRRMC because yun nga paulit-ulit siyang it's a recurring event and now that we are intensifying the preparation the planning nagkakaroon tayo ng um, ng preparedness at nababawasan natin yung mga mm-hmm. yung mga hazards na nararanasan ng ating mga kababayan so that is true yes. mm-hmm. although institution mo is talagang institution kami <laughs> kasi yes. may batas tayo na yes. nagtadhana na magkaroon ng NDRMC although meron tayong gumugulong na paano ka lang batas sa kongreso na pagtatatag ng national disaster national Dep- uh, department of disaster resilience uh, isa ito sa mga inaasikaso din natin ngayon um, hati ang mga schools of thought dito sa disaster management but the end point there is to strengthen the Philippine disaster management system. Okay, okay. So, okay. siguro sir Mark will will delve more into that later. I said, tapos ko yung timer natin. <laughs> Nag-black na. So, let's, let's let's wrap up our second segment there with Sir Mark. Mga kaiska, mga kaiska. As as uh, Sir Mark mentioned, NDRMC just like their well, siguro from what we gathered today, NDRMC just like how lengthy their name is, they go in lengths for our safety and for of course to reduce the uh, damage done by um, the calamities, disasters and to prevent um, any further casualties from happening. Now, for our next segment, we will discuss how science and technology is used for disaster risk reduction and management especially. Now, we'll ask questions like, why is it important and how can it be improved for the safety of our people here in the Philippines? All of that will be discussed when we come back, so stay tuned. Dahil dito, modern tayo. Ipinaliwanag ni FDI Director General Eric Domingo na ang mataas na efficacy rate ng mga bakuna ay makakatulong ng higit para sa kaligtasan ng mga Pilipino sa kabila ng pagkakaroon ng bagong COVID-19 variant sa bansa. Aniya, malaki rin ang tsansa ng pagbaba ng bilang ng mga kaso ng COVID-19 positive kung ang lahat ay mababakunahan. Ayon sa immune organization, ang isang bakuna na mayroong efficacy rate na 90% sa isang clinical trial halimbawa ay nangangahulugang mayroong 90% na pagbawas sa mga kaso ng sakit sa nabakunahang grupo kumpara sa pangkat na hindi nabakunahan o placebo. Na iba sa tinatawag na vaccine effectiveness kung saan sinusukat nito kung gaano kahusay gumana ang isang bakuna kapag ibinigay sa grupo ng mga tao sa labas ng clinical trials. Dagdag pa ng eksperto, ang mga ipinamamahaging bakuna ng pamahalaan ay mayroon ring high efficacy rate na sapat upang maiwasan ng vaccine recipient sa malubhang karamdaman at pagkamatay dahil sa coronavirus. Uh, the local government unit is preparing for the new variant kasi mas infectious si Delta, you know, mas infectious mm-hmm. si bagong variant natin. Mm-hmm. It can cause one confirmed case. Pwede kang makahawa or pwede kang mahawaan ng hanggang 30 person na negative. Pwede kang makahawa ng ganon. Hindi ka tulad before na 4 is to, uh, uh, is to 10, ganon na yung 1 uh, is to 10 na yung isang positive, pwede makahawa lang ng sampung close contact. No? Pwede, mag, uh, pwede siya makahawa ng ganon. Ngayon, Uh, dito sa bagong variant natin na to, actually, uh, mataas siya, no? mataas ang advantages niya niya, pwede siyang mahawaan natin agad. At yan ang mga balita sa oras na ito. Ako si RJ Calara para sa si Observer Flash Online. Welcome back to New Normal 101. Over this segment, we will talk about how science and technology is used for disaster risk reduction and management. Of course, we are still joined in this wonderful session by James and of course, Sir Mark, one of NDRMC's spokesperson. Um, so Sir Mark, siguro, let's get straight to the point. Can you please uh, enlighten us, Sir, um, how science and technology um, help reduce or prevent um, the impact from a disaster or a calamity? 
Actually, um, I'm proud to say that our disaster risk reduction and management system is science-based. Wala tayong wala tayong pagdedesisyon dito na batay sa kutob o sa trip. Yeah. <laughs> trip <lang. laughs> um, uh, in, in in terms of uh, disaster prevention and mitigation, uh, sa NDRMC ang lead talaga natin diyan ay ang uh, Department of Science and Technology. Why? Because they're the ones who possess the 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 technical expertise uh, to fully describe the danger, uh, the danger, the hazard, and to recommend uh, all scientific inter- uh, interventions that are supported by scientific data. Diba? So, ang ginagawa natin dito, um, aside from the monitoring, surveillance of, of possible hazards, uh, yung intervention uh, to heighten, uh, to reduce the risk of damages ay science-based din. Yung mga engineering interventions pa lang natin, for example, um, These are, are created by, of course, engineers, experts in the field. The flood control programs, natin, yung mga flood control, flood mitigation uh, infrastructure, the uh, ating mga advisory or the creation of the uh, of the guidance or standards for in, for construction. Siyempre, supported yan ng ating uh, mga experts. Kaya nga, ngayon, we're bringing it down to the level of community, pero hindi yung, kumbaga, yung sinulat na scientific uh, item, isa, iaabot lang natin sa community. Siyempre, yes. hindi tayo magkakaintindihan doon sa so technical jargon. What we're doing as part of our communication effort is to laymanize all these items para magets ng no, mga kababayan natin so that they can embrace this information and actually live live it as a part of their lives so kasama din diyan yung pagpalpapalakas ng kahandaan natin is syempre yung mga scientific instrumentation na ginagamit kaya nga ngayong panahon na to at par with international standards yung ating equipment uh, when it comes to monitoring. Uh, our operation center, for example, at Camp Aguinaldo uh, is already a state-of-the-art uh, monitoring and uh, nerve center for disaster uh, coordination operations. Uh, yung ating pag-asa, yung kanilang weather monitoring uh, and instruments ay pasok talaga uh, sa pangailangan ng Pilipinas, yung Doppler radars natin, Di ba, hindi na lang pipito-pito. Siyempre, napakarami na niyan mm-hmm. to cover the Philippine airspace. Yung ating uh, FIBOX, ang equipment mm-hmm. nila, uh, enough, may mga observatories na tayo malapit sa vulkan, may tumutungtong sa vulkan, wow. di ba? Uh, and uh, the monitoring equipment for seismic activity is also there. Uh, we also have satellite utilization para makita natin yung topography, um, at yung mga possibilities ng, uh, ng emergencies in those areas. May mga hazard mapping na tayo na different overlays para makita natin yung uh, different characteristics of topography. Para makita natin itong area na to, posibleng mag-landslide, itong area na to, flooding, storm surge, etc. So, kumbaga, sa tao na lang. <laughs> kumbaga, we need, we need to bring this to the people. The local governments are being trained para alam nilang gamitin ito. Ibabawal na ang ignoranting LGU executive kasi kutuloy-tuloy ang training natin. Tapos ang ginawa pa na DILG, meron pa tayong oplan listo. Sinimplify natin yung effort. Checklist na lang, may mga indicators. Pag may emergency, itong listahan na to dapat ma-accomplish na LGU, magawa ng mga kababayan natin para walang masasaktan, walang madidisgrasya. Ganun na kasimple ang implementation. But the implementation is supported uh, by scientific interventions, uh, engineering interventions, as well as, of course, the human intervention. Correct, it. correct. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting, no, sir, kasi actually, hindi na kasukuyin nanay ko. Ang sabi niya nga, uh, kasi he, he, she learned na uh, we, we, we will be speaking with you. And then, napagkwento na namin, very, very brief lang during breakfast yung, oo oh, nga, kasi dati, nung, nung sa araw niya kasi, pag nagbabalita yung yung mga news stations about mga up, upcoming na, na storms or typhoons medyo inaccurate pero ngayon pag na, pag napapanood niya si ano si si Mang Tani sa 24 oras 
ma- oh may bagyo sa ganitong araw may paparating na bagyo expect na maglalandfall sa ganito sa ganito ganyan very accurate na siya at, at talagang at, at, at that way we are more prepared and we are really expecting it to happen kaysa naman sa dati na ay hindi ano baka chances lang yun chances lang so mm-hmm. you, you can see over time SNT or science and technology has greatly and um, yeah greatly impacted and improved yung ating mm-hmm. monitoring uh, capabilities no? we're also mm-hmm. we're also managing expectations kasi mm-hmm. alam nyo naman uh, the size size uh, seismic studies volcanic studies and weather studies are are not exactly exact sciences yeah. kapag malayo pa yung bagyo hindi mo talaga masasabi kung saan dadaan yan hindi mo masasabi right. gaano karami ang bibubuhos na ulan yan or saan yan trip magbuhos ng ulan mm-hmm. for that matter but uh, bec- habang lumalapit siya doon nagiging definite yung ating mga projections yeah. yun ang ginagawa ng ating mga weather specialists ang etong gina- nangyayari na ito ay coordination talaga. Bakit? Pag binigay ni Pag-asa yung mga detalye, hindi lang iniitsa nila sa area, bahala na tayo sa buhay natin. On the part of the NDRMC, pag, for example, may bagyo, magmi-meeting kami kaagad. Nasa labas okay. pa ng Philippine Area of Responsibility yung bagyo. Aha. Anong pagmi-meetinga namin? Uh, yung initial projections ni Pag-asa, i-identify na kung saan posibing dumaan yung bagyo. Anong may dudulot nitong bagyo na to? Storm surge, landslide, flooding, di ba? Wow, okay. At ano ang dapat gawin? Corresponding actions to those kinds of emergencies. Uh, one of the primary elements there is the consideration for preemptive evacuation. Di ba? Okay. At syempre, hindi ka pwede mag-evacuate na parang maiwan lang sa area yung mga tao, alisin mo sa bahay nila. Mm-hmm. Syempre, you have to identify and ensure that the evacuation areas are safe areas na hindi lulubog sa baha. Umiwas nga sila ng baha sa bahay, yung evacuation center, nilubog din pala. Diba? Kagaya sa Yolanda, one of the learning experiences, people evacuated from the storm to avoid the storm surge, pero yung area of inevacu- na inevacuate nila, na inundate din ang storm surge. So, what's the point? Diba? Pag gano'n. Yeah. So, we're, we're, that's also part of, of the developments that uh, we have. At uh, doon, ang tawag doon sa proseso natin yun, yung pre-disaster risk assessment. Uh, and we're always doing that. Honestly, talagang uh, ay, pidra na naman. Parang ganun. Kagaya kahapon, yung ginawa namin sa taal, pidra na naman ang tawag dyan. So, it's a natural process na for us. And uh, that's what we, yung findings namin just sa assessment, yan ang sinishare natin sa mga tao. Sa local government units at yung mga warnings pinapadala natin sa tao para alam lahat ng ang kanilang dapat gawin yung mga outcomes na yan. Very, very Planning very talaga sir and strategy, no? Talagang mahalaga and important yung role niya, no? So, mm-hmm. um, just like um, what Sir Mark said, yung science and technology, it allows us to be more definite about the plans, kung paano natin resolvehin to determine or to spot yung mga places that will be affected, uh, paano natin i-educate yung mga, yung mga tao, no? Um, through this forecast, no? Um, and also through this, yung sa kulong nga ng science and technology and forecasting and monitoring, maraming buhay na ang naligtas niyan because um, um, away from natural disasters tulad ng volcanic eruption, that like like what's happening now yung violent storms like what happened in uh, in Rolly and Yolanda dahil bibigyan tayo ng mga warnings hours and days ahead before the disasters mm-hmm. or hazards occur and that is all thing syempre sa science and technology so sir ang um, question lang natin no so paano nga ba natin na maximize yung science and technology in disaster risk reduction management maximization um, hindi natin kailangan na i-maximize bakit kasi it's part of the system hindi kikilos for example ako as a disaster manager hindi ako kikilos basta-basta kung walang scientific data na magtasabi sa akin that this is the proper thing to do mm-hmm. um, and the, the systems that we have established are all uh, supported by uh, scientific uh, data um, so hanggang sa pinakahuling hibla ng detalye ng uh, scientific items na yan ginagamit natin um, yu para ma-determine hanggang kailan siguro ito, kung kakayanin. Ha? Kasi for example, yung volcano emergency, hindi natin masasabi kung hanggang kailan. Yeah. Pero ang masasabi natin, given that hindi natin alam, the level of preparation should be commensurate to the possibility mm-hmm. of, uh, of protracted emergencies. Okay. Meaning to say, we always look at the worst case scenario para mabuti na maghanda ng sobra 
wag lang tayong kulangin. Lang kaya nga, uh, pero ayaw naman natin mangyari yung kagaya ng mga eskandalo noon na sobra-sobra nga, tinapon mo naman, napanis naman, nabulok naman, etc. Hinord naman. Um, this involves the effective uh, management of resources then para yung nangangailangan talaga makatanggap. At kung kailangan ilabas yung mga equipment, mga supplies, dapat matanggap yan at makarating dun sa area. Kasi may logistic considerations pa, yung logistical considerations. Meron pa tayong mga timelines niyan. For example, yung vaccinations, you also handle the uh, logistical support for the vaccination hmm. program then. Okay. So may timeline yan, may mga peculiarities for the handling of the, the shipments pa. So we all attend to those items and these are all supported and guided by scientific data. Siguro sir, kanina, what I just want to highlight na, napaka-supportive siguro ng ating national government when it comes to these type of activities, yung, yung risk reduction and, manage, and management ng mga disasters. Pero sir, siguro, we've talked about the, the, the support and the cooperation of, of, of our administration. Pero how about our LGUs, sir? How cooperative or how supportive are they when it comes to these types of uh, activities? The, the beauty here is that since there's already the guidelines that they have to follow and matindi ang pagbabastonero na ginagawa ng DILG, local government units are more uh, cooperative and talagang dinidibdib nila yung pagiging frontliners when it comes to disaster management. Na-mention nga ni James kanina yung warnings, di ba? Super advanced na ng warnings natin. Sa dami ng warnings natin, nagre-reklamo nga yung mga tao. Warning nga lang ng warning. Hey, okay, sa cellphone, sa cellphone. Okay. Yeah, right? That's also one of our landmark hmm. uh, adjustments, yung developments. And walang saysa yung warning kung hindi kikilos yung tao. Correct. And that's Correct. what we're pushing now, yung human participation, human intervention, human support for all those activities. And uh, malinaw naman kasi yung mission natin eh. Take people away from harm's way. Yes. Number two, while they are under the care of government, provide for their needs. And number three, after the danger has passed, let them go home and get back to their normal lives as soon as possible. Yun lang naman yung sinabi ng ating chief executive sa amin during that time. Um, when, during he, when the time he assumed his position in 20, 2016. 2016, 2016, yes sir. So... Okay. The president just gave that order and hindi naman kami mga pako na kailangan yung pukukin pa. Yeah. So, okay. we know our jobs. So, that's what we've been doing. Alright. Thank you so much for these valuable inputs, Sir Mark. So, there you have it, mga kaisko at mga kaiska. Although natural disasters like violent storms and uh, volcanic eruptions or earthquakes so on and so forth and other disasters cannot technically be prevented, we can reduce or even prevent the effects of these natural hazards through the use of science and technology and, of course, proper preparation. Tama ka dyan, ano? Tama ka dyan, Jeremiah, no? And not only that, no? Um, through the application of science and technology and disaster risk reduction programs, specialists can now collaborate with policymakers so that they can create policies that can save many people's lives in times of danger. Now, for our last segment, the most awaited segment is coming right up. Curious POPians are back at it again to ask questions for our special guest about disaster risk reduction. Yeah, I know I'm, I may not be here during last episode, but I watched the stream. But yeah, last episode, our theme was about superheroes. Kaya naman, nakakurious kung anong theme naman ang inihanda ng New Normal 101 for this episode. Abangan yan sa pagbabalik ng New Normal 101. Dahil dito, modern tayo. ang iba't ibang isyu na hinaharap ng mga mag-aral, nagharap sa isang online dialogue ang PUP Execom at student representatives mula sa iba't ibang branches at campuses. Nito ang ikawalo ng Hulyo, matagumpay na naidaos ang nasabing pagpupulong na pinangunahan ni PUP President Manuel Muhi kasama ang mga vice presidente na bumubuo ng Execom at mga student representatives mula sa Office of the Student Region Anak PUP Federation at Branches and Campus Publications. 
isang advocacy namin ay magiging transparent and accountable sa lahat ng oras, lalong-lalo na sa lahat ng aming ginagawa sa so, opisina ng Riente, hindi lamang doon sa opisina ng Riente, kundi sa alyansa ng nagkakaisang konseho. We trust the process. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that what is right for the students, we remain for the students and fight for it uh, until the very last. Pinigyan pansin ang mga concerns patungkol sa delivery of instructional materials, pagpapatupad ng academic ease, pagpupondo ng publikasyon, cash incentives para sa mga academic achievers, appointment of student representatives para sa Committee on Decorum and Investigation at Student Disciplinary Board. Para naman sa implementasyon ng Visitor's Appointment Scheduling System o VASS, nilinaw ni President Muhi na pinapayagan na ang mga walk-in visitor para sa mga kliyente ng Office of the University Registrar, kailangan lamang nitong kompletuhin ang mga health declaration form. Sumunod sa mga alituntunin ng IATF at mga health protocols sa loob ng sintang paaralan. Ako si Nina Ong Paupo para sa The Observer Flash Online. Alright, welcome back to New Normal 101 and we are back again of course with James and our very special guest for today's episode, Sir Mark Timbal. Thank you guys for tuning in and now for our final segment. Curious PUPNs will be joining us to ask even more questions to Sir Mark about disaster risk reduction and management. Mga kajan, Jeremiah, ang segment natin ay tatawagin natin Call a friend. So if you are looking on your screen right now, we have three different themes and each theme represent a curious PUPN. So here are the themes. First, todo na to. Second, share mo lang. And the third one is take it or leave it. So Sir Mark will only answer every question that each PUPN will ask. So now, for our first theme, this is called todo na to. Let's hear it from our fellow Kaisko. Hello po, ito po yung question ko. Uh, ano po yung biggest challenge nyo when it comes promoting NDRRMC? Thank you po. Well, promoting the agency, hindi naman para ka, hindi kasi ito parang brand na parang bilhin ninyo. Yun ang ginag- hindi namin ginagawa yun. Um, the challenge that we are always facing is to ensure how to ensure public participation, public support to our programs and our activities. Um, Kaalin sabay nung amin pagpapaunlad ng ating sistema ng disaster risk reduction and management, ginagawa natin yung pagsiguro na yung mga kababayan natin ay number one, ay intindihan nila yung nangyayari. Mm-hmm. Number two, ano ang saysay nito para sa kanila? At number three, ko anong dapat nilang gawin? para masigurado yung kaligtasan nila. Yun yung lagi natin ipinaparating sa kanila uh, sa lahat ng aspeto ng ating mga pagkilos. And this remains as a challenge, yes? Kasi ano ito eh, uh, ang tindi ng dynamics dito, kailangan ng creativity, kailangan ng consideration ng ethnographic and demographic uh, uh, points nitong bagay na ito. And uh, the good thing here is uh, my team and I, Uh, sa buong sa communications ng NDRMC, yung mga information agencies natin, pati na rin ang buong uh, uh, linya ng mga ahensa ay uh, gano'n ang ginagawa. And uh, we're hoping that we're always uh, making that point uh, every time. Tama naman, sir, na NDRMC is not really a brand. Kailangan i-promote ka lang para bilhin nyo talking na. Pero sir, sir, Follow up question would be because I remember na bang yun na, um, it is also the NDRMC NDRMC's resp- responsibility to cascade um, information to the local uh, sorry to, to to the citizens effectively. So again, hindi naman may hindi na ng ating mga kababayan yung mga um, scientific lingo. Alam technical yeah. Yeah, oo. so if I may just ask sir. Naging mahirap ko ba yung ganon or mga parang nagkaroon mo ba tayo ng sari-sari challenges in terms of doing so especially during the time of pandemic na napakalimitado ng ano na mga ng mga galaw natin. Challenge wise yes. <laughs> Kasi um, uh, 
we we need to metamorphose we need to evolve para maabot natin yung level ng kamalayan ng mga kababayan natin depending on the target audience kasi yan eh. and true enough this is a multi uh, sectoral and uh, multi audience approach lang ginagawa natin hindi lang pwedeng pang youth lang hindi lang pwedeng pang magulang etc and we it was a challenge. Science din ang ginamit natin, the uh, sociology and the communication uh, management were all applied para ma, ma custom natin yung messages natin for the people. Mm-hmm. Ang ang nagpapasalamat kami kasi hindi kami mag-isa. <laughs> we we have the the help of our uh, advocacy partners at kasama na din yung mga kapatid natin sa pamamahayag sa media. Uh, even though uh, there is this political thing uh, uh, when it comes to what our discussions of issues, yeah. ang NDRRMC ay uh, sheltered at protected pa rin from these kinds of disturbances. Mm-hmm. So, uh, ang focus lang namin ay, ay trabaho. Wala kang pakialam sa politika na nangyayari. But ang nangyayari is tinutulungan kami ng media at ng sambayanan uh, para mapaabot ito mga messages na ito. Correct, correct. I, I think what, what really matters talaga uh, or a priority would be citizens first before anything else. No? So, okay. Thank you so much, Sir Mark, for your answer on our first question. Now, for our next theme, this is called Share Mo Lang. Let's hear it from our BUTN. Mayroon po ba kayong may share na isang successful disaster risk reduction project? Kulang ang oras natin. <laughs> totoo, totoo. <laughs> um, number one, uh, national dis- uh, nationwide simultaneous earthquake. Pandemic, uh, ng participation. Nung pandemic, we shifted online. Uh, instead na millions ang participation, naging hundred thousand lang. So, but just the same, people are still participating. Um, yung ating uh, nation, National Disaster Resilience Month, which is this month, July, has been an institutional uh, activity already uh, for the Philippines. At uh, lahat ng mga disaster management efforts natin, uh, sino-showcase natin for that. Um, ano pa? Uh, operations-wise, yung mga nangyari major storms last year, but yung earthquake operations natin no 2019, as far as I'm concerned, these were all successful disaster management activities because number one, uh, hindi ganon katindi yung number ng mga namatay because people have been uh, made aware, people have been warned, and people were assisted every step of the way. Um, hindi mo masasabi in any uh, in any way na parang mayroong pagkakataon na inabandona ng gobyerno, inabandona ng Pilipinas yung uh, kapakanan ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, meron, may mga situations, yes, na hindi totally satisfactory or hindi masyadong happy yung mga kababayan natin, lalo na yung naging issue yung pagbaha ng last year, di ba? Ang dami mga nagbaha na area. The point there is sa sobrang tinin ng baha, napakadami nating dineploy ng mga rescue personnel noon ha, ng isang iglap. Hindi mo naman ibig sabihin na isang iglap lang din ay marerescue mo lahat yung mga yon. Um, that is one of the uh, difficulties that we're encountering. Hindi naman pwede one is to one ang rescue eh. Isang rescuer group para sa isang irerescue. Eh, paano kung 100 yung ano, <laughs> rescue mo? 100 din ba yung rescue teams na i-release mo? We have to effectively management, manage our resources. And that's what we're doing. And I'm and, and, and yeah. sure, we're, we're all confident naman siguro sir na this is also the same level of um, alertness and uh, talagang um, yung pag, pag, pagiging prosigido natin in terms of ngayon yung sa nangyari sa, sa Taal. Now, I don't want to ask any siguro any questions about uh, about Taal as of now kasi baka mamaya when we air this material eh um, iba na yung situation natin ngayon. So, so in order for us to prevent us, siguro I'll, I'll veer away from asking further questions about that. So, um, and, but, but I'm pretty sure naman, uh, I think I'm, I'm very confident with what, with what we've discussed over time in this short, short very short session that, that, that we have right now. I'm very, very confident as a, as a citizen na um, the NDR RMC, the LGUs are on top 
of everything and anything that will happen in case disaster happens. At sana hindi naman ganun katalas ng nangyari. <laughs> so, yun, speaking for James, the NDRMC, uh, yes. speaking for the NDRMC, we're always on top of the situation. Mm-hmm. There there's no other way but to be on top of the situation. Kailangan talaga. Okay. Dahil Kailangan talaga. pag hindi kami on top of the situation, that will be a serious uh, negligence mm-hmm. on our part. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Mark. Uh, James? That's quite plenty, no? Sobrang dinaming projects sir. and DRMC that we are now benefiting from. Now, um, for our last theme, this is called Take It or Leave It. Now, let's hear it from a call of, of a friend. Ano pong mga advice niyo sa mga citizen para makatulong sa disaster risk reduction? Thank you. That's a, that's 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 uh, uh, that's a very very good question. Bakit? Um, ang effort talaga namin ngayon ay masigurado na each and every Filipino uh, becomes part of the disaster management effort. Kaya para para mangyari yun, ang sinasabi natin ang payo ko sa ating mga kababayan. Pag iisipin natin ang kaligtasan, wag natin isipin yung sarili natin lang. Isipin natin yung mga mahal natin sa buhay, isipin natin ang ating pamilya, isipin din natin ang pamayanan natin. Kasi kung anong makakasakit sa pamayanan natin, most probably tatamaan din tayo. Yeah. So, ang paghahanda natin dapat, it's not just uh, at home. Uh, we start at home, yes. Let's build our household preparedness. Pero once we're done with that, the household preparedness, let's also make sure na yung kapitbahay natin, yung pamayanan natin, okay. handa rin. Kasi anong gagawin mo? <laughs> Kung tinamaan tayo ng disaster, handa ka, marami kang pagkain, marami kang tubig, etc. Tapos yung mga kapitbahay mo, walang-wala. Kasi <laughs> saan kakatok yun? Siyempre, di ba sa'yo din? Di ba? So, we have to organize it at the community level. Notwithstanding the fact na it's all, the government will always be there to provide assistance, yes. Pero ang ta- taong handa, sabi nga ng ating Secretary of National Defense, ang taong handa, yan yung nakakaligtas. Ang taong handa, siya din yung nakakatulong sa kapwa sa panahon ng kagipitan. At yun dapat ang ating ginagawa at yun ang pinapayo namin palagi. So, Sir Mark, siguro, um, very curious question lang kasi... Sa kahit anong sakuna, mapabagyuman ito, lindol, or pagputok ng vulkan, hindi na mawala sa, bal- sa mga balita yung mga citizen or mga residente na, nag- na tumatanggi. They refuse to evacuate the area. Like nung isang araw lang, may, nap- may napanood po ako sa balita na yung isang, isang residente ay hindi ay talagang sumusuway siya na mag-evacuate sa area na yun kasi andun yung mga alaga niya mga, mga hayop. So, yun yung mga, yung kanyang mga aso, so on so forth. Uh, and like, so, he decided to stay. So, if I may just ask, um, how does the NDRMC handle such uh, individuals or, or such people or such scenarios? If I may just ask. Thank you, Jeremiah. Ano, technically, hindi naman kami nandun sa level ng community talaga para puwersahin okay. itong mga kababayan natin. Uh, ang kinaganda ng sitwasyon ngayon, mas naging mahusay ang local government natin, ang ating mga kapulisan, ang ating mga disaster management officers sa pakikipag-pakiusap <laughs> sa ating mga kababayan. Aside from the fact na uh, open na sila at very cooperative, hindi na tayo masyado nahihirapan ngayon sa evacuation process, lalo na sa preemptive evacuation. Pero totoo yung sinabi mo, meron at meron talagang gusto yung maiwan. Yung sirkumstansya kagaya noong panahon noong nakaraan na nagkaroon ng matinding pagbaha sa may Bicol area during those times of the typhoons la- last year, yung mga nagpaiwan yun na ng mga nadisgrasya eh. At nakikita yun ng mga kababayan natin. Yun pa lang, yung information pa lang na yun, nagbibigay ng, uh, in, ng rason sa kanila na oops, tatanungin yung sarili nila na mali ata itong ginagawa ko. But we're also, adre- on the part of the NDRMC, we're also addressing the reasons why they're choosing to stay. Yung iba for security, dahil da, baka daw manakawan yung bahay nila. Department of Agriculture, has uh, programs, rescue programs, na may mga areas na kung saan pwedeng ilagak yung mga alaga nilang hayo uh, para hindi nila alalahanin. So, kailangan makipag-ugnayan sila sa local government nila para mailipat itong livestock nila to the animal rescue centers. 
para for the time being, doon mo na aalagaan. Wala sila aalalahanin kasi aalagaan ng DA yung mga uh, livestock nila. Eh, ano pa yung problema? Trabaho. Eh, hindi kami makakaalis dito. Dahil dito yung trabaho po. Siyempre, magsususpindi tayo ng work during that time. Yeah, And yeah. we're also providing additional compensation. May cash for work, cash for cash, food for food for work, etc. na ginagawa ng ating gobyano for those people. So, we're addressing the multifaceted concerns involved in the evacuation process. Well, thank you so much for um, for informing us about that, Sir Mark. Uh, siguro, magsasabi ko, it's not yung isang oras na meron tayo ngayon sa talk show. I don't think it's enough for us to talk about all of these kasi napakadami pala ng mga mga, ba- ng mga bagay na involved sa mga sa mga activities. So, uh, so, again, we're very privileged to, to have spoken with you and to have asked this question. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Mark. Um, so, yeah. That wraps up our episode for today. I know, medyo, siguro, medyo bitin. Ako, nabitin ako sa totoo lang eh. But I hope... Ako nabitin din ako. <laughs> Di ba? Nakabitin eh. But I do hope marami kayong natutunan sa ating episode about disaster risk reduction and management. Again, we can't thank you enough, Sir Martin Bal, for sharing your knowledge and expertise on this topic. But before we wrap everything, um, is there anything, siguro, sir, that, that you would like to say to our audience? Thank you for having me and uh, makakaasa po ang lahat ng mga kababayan natin na hindi kami natutulog pag panahon ng trabaho. Uh, tuloy-tuloy po ang ating paglilingkod, ang pangangalaga natin sa mga kababayan sa kahit anong emergency. Ito po ang aming sinumpaang tungkulin kaya hanggang sa pinakahuli, even to the bitter end, that is what our, wow. what we will do. Thank you po. I, I got goosebumps there. Uh. Thank you so much for your service, Sir Mark. <laughs> James? Thank you again, Sir Mark. Thank you, Sir Mark. Uh, for joining us today and thank you then sa ating mga kaisko and kaiska for staying with us until the very end. We hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as we do and remember to always, always be vigilant with your surroundings because natural disasters are very unpredictable. So take Sir Mark's advice and stay safe everyone. Alright, thank you again everyone and we will see you on our next one. Dahil dito, modern tayo. Public display of affection gaya ng paghalik sa mga sanggol at kamay na matanda sa mga botante sa mga araw ng kampanya, ipinagbabawal ng Commission on Elections. Sa isang webinar ng House of Representatives na pinangunahan ni Comelec Spokesperson James Jimenez nitong Martes, ipinaliwanag nito ang ilang mga gawin ng mga politiko noong pre-pandemic ay dapat ng ipagbawal sa kitna ng banta ng COVID-19. Anito, hindi niya kahayaan ng mass gatherings gaya ng pagdaraos ng isang political rally o pagtitipon. Magisimula ang panahon ng kampanya sa susunod na taon, ikawalwa ng Pebrero para sa mga National Post at ikadalawamputlima ng Parso para sa Local Post. Nauna na rin naglabas ng paruntunan ng Commission on Elections sa pagbabawal ng pagkakabit ng campaign materials ng mga politiko gaya ng tarpaulins at posters nito. Naapaloob sa Section 18 ng Omnibus Election Code na ang mga anumang election campaign ay pinagbabawal sa labas ng panahon ng kampanya. Kanya. Kung kaya't ipinaalalahanan ng pamahalaan ang mga kandidato pati na rin ang kanilang mga taga-suporta na sumunod para sa maayos na pagkasagawa ng campaign period. Ako si Limuel Baruela para sa The Observer Flash Online.